Okay, so uh, we're here uh, in Monterrey. We're, uh, I'm accompanied by, I guess, a person that has become my friend here in the last few days. It's uh, Timo Tolki from Stradivarius. How are you, Timo? Very well, very fine, thank you. Yeah, you're good? Yes. You're living in, Mon in Monterrey now, here. Yes. I never thought this moment would happen. I, yes. I never thought this moment would happen, and yet I'm here sitting next to you sharing a beer. Yeah. And uh, having a good time. Uh, why Monterrey, man? What, what the hell are you doing here? Well, it's a long story, but they booked me some gigs here, mm -hmm. you know, in Mexico, like five of them, but they were all canceled. Okay. So I was three weeks in Mexico City before I came here. I gave less guitar lessons and stuff like that, and you know, and then I just said to, to the local promoter that I need a change of environment, so mm. he booked me a ticket here. Okay. You know. So you, we got mountains here. We got uh, some yes. beautiful scenery. Uh -huh. Do you feel like back at Finland? I mean, to me, it, it looks really European. Right. Yes. Yeah. Really. I mean, it's it's really because I I've been here I guess three times, mm -hmm. uh, but I never saw the mountains somehow. You, know? <laughs> you never saw this area. Never. You were probably just traveling, coming in the hotel, hitting the club. The usual. And uh, back to the next gig, yeah, right? The usual. Yeah. Right. So hey, we're in Monterrey. You're having a good time. You obviously had some projects. Yeah. I'm sure COVID affected you somehow. Well. It canceled my gigs. Those were the gigs that actually, yes. that, so COVID were, was the, yes. the reason? Yes, I was, I was booked, one was in Hermosillo. Hermosillo, yes. okay. W which were the other cities? I, th I don't remember anymore, but it's like two and a half months ago. Okay. So Mexico City was one, and then I, I, I was there and I thought, what the fuck should I do? So I thought I, I start, start writing songs. Correct. And somebody uh, uh, said to me, I should go to... I don't remember anymore, but it's some beach city. Uh, here in Mexico? Maybe yes. Cancun? No. Uh, Puerto Vallarta? Yes, that's it. Puerto Vallarta? Yes. So they, they told you, it's like, go to Puerto Vallarta and go I write songs. And, and compose over yes. there. So did you? No. No, not yet? No, I stayed in Mexico City and, and with this beautiful family. Mm -hmm. Really, hospi the hospitality was amazing. They're like, uh, you know. Uh, really, really good people. Right. You know. And so I stayed there and I gave some lessons, you know. And then I thought I have a gig here in Ragnarok. Okay, at the at the, at the bar here, yes. Ragnarok, yes. aquí en Monterrey. Yeah. I even went there, you know. And and but then it turned out that they cannot do it because you couldn't do live music. So of course. So when do you think? When do you think uh, things are going to get back to normal, Timo? Because, I mean, we all, we all want to see live music once again. We yeah. all want to go back to the stage yes. and perform. Uh -huh. uh, obviously, there are musicians around the world yes. that depend on gigs. Yeah. Not only world-class musicians uh, such as yourself, but I'm yeah. talking about, like, lo uh, you know, uh, local musicians that have, mm -hmm. like, you know, the local gigs, etc. When do you yeah. think it's all going to come back to normal? I think pretty soon. I pretty think soon? In, the, in the autumn. In, uh, in, uh, around autumn? Yes, yeah, I so definitely in, in 2020. Yes. Uh, I mean, at least the, the latter so. part, like uh, like uh, fourth quarter or something like October, that of 2020. November right. November, around that time. Well, let's let's hope so, man, because I know that uh, we are so hungry to yeah, yeah. listen to live music. I think um, around that time, because this, this virus is a man-made. <laughs> you, know. you think this virus is man-made? I don't think, I know. You know this virus yeah, is man-made? Yes. Okay. It's logic. So how, tell me, like, why, why would you, what would you say that? What would you base that on? Like, what do you think? Tell me, tell me your ideology behind that. Yeah, it's a Chinese. Is it, the Chinese developed it? Yes. As, uh, like, as, as, uh, maybe warfare or something? I think it's, it's something to do with the states. Oh, okay. Uh, the war between them. Correct. You know, maybe. The commercial, you know, all this shit. That's right. Going on, so. so maybe it's, a, it's, a, it's an economy war, but they're it's also... It's an economy war. It's definitely an economy oh, war. Oh, yeah, yeah. Now, let me ask you something. You got a lot of fans in China? Yes. You do? I, I do, yeah. Say a shout out to your uh, friends. Uh, do you speak any Chinese, by any way? Uh, I by don't any chance? No, no, I don't. No? How many languages do you speak? Uh, I speak Finnish, Swedish, German, and English, four. And now Spanish? And soon Spanish. Soon Spanish. Yes, yes. Well, you, I've heard you speak. You, you, you can speak it. Yes, so, so going back uh, to like current days, you know, you told me um, you uh, uh, there, there was a, there was a period that you wanted to focus on just composing yes. and uh, writing new music. Huh? So I'm guessing uh, which project was this for? What is what is in the horizon for you? It's two. It's Avalon Four. Avalon Four. Yes. Uh, I've heard some uh, great uh, news and rumors about uh, some musicians like uh, Anek 
from uh, am I pronouncing her name correct? A neck. Yes. From uh, 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 from the Devon Townsend Project and the Gathering. Yes. Uh, there's also Anna uh, von Kirschbergen. I can't say that, man. My, it's just Dutch. My it's Dutch. Yeah. My Mexican tongue is not capable of saying. Gearsbergen, yeah. like that? Yeah. Well, there you go. It's a good attempt, huh? Gearsbergen. So um, who, who else is part of Avalon? And more importantly, because I've, I've read some of the names out there, and if you want to share with everybody that's, that's watching us, uh, but who else are you planning on bringing on? Is it a surprise? When are we going to hear more about this? It's not a surprise. I mean, for me, the best Avalon is the first, Land of New Hope. Uh huh. And there I had Elis Rude from Amaranthi. Correct. From Sweden. Mm -hmm. Beautiful lady. Beautiful. Nice, kind, really nice person. Mm hmm Russell Allen from Symphony X. I love Russell Allen. Rob Rock. Rob Rock is great. I Who just participated? I just you I just, just spoke to him? Yeah. Oh, wow, man. Yeah. How was that? What is he up to? He's in the Daytona Beach. Daytona? Yeah, he lives Psh, there. Oh, wow. Yeah. I'm sure he's having a great time out oh, there. Oh, yeah. He's writing a solo album, and he asked me to write a song for him. So oh, that's beautiful, man. Yeah, I'm going to do it. So that's, that's perfect. This guy, is, his, his voice is so amazing. Even when you talk to him on the phone, you hear the resonance. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll like tell you, I'll tell you this. The first time that I heard him was on Avantasia's first album, uh, and uh, to be honest with you, I did not know who he was. Yeah, yeah. Up until I, uh, like, I, I, I listened to his songs. Uh, I think "Glory of Rome." I don't know if you remember that song, "Glory, Glory of, of Rome." Yeah. It's beautiful, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he has some sections in that song that really blew me away. Yeah, I, he kicks ass. He he kicks so much ass. Big time, yes. I can't wait to listen to that new you song. You know, he was like, I heard about him. In 88 or 87, he was singing in the Project Mars with uh -huh. Tommy Aldrich, Rudy Sarso, and Tony McAlpine. Oh, I, Whole Tony. album. Yeah. Pro Project Driver. And I heard this guy, this fucking power, you know. So it's amazing. He's got yeah. a great projection. Yeah, like, who is this guy? Yeah. So, and then years later, my, my, my record label, Frontiers, from Italy. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't mention them, but I do. So. <laughs> Uh, so they, they got in touch with the guy and I, I said, I talked to him like, you know, I'm a very big fan of you, you know. I heard you singing all this, like Nations of Fire, it's like really fucking there, you know. Wow, uh, Nations of Fire, I gotta listen to that song. Yeah, it's called yeah. Nations of Fire. So what is, what is this new song that you write? Do you have a name for the song yet? I have uh, a lot of names. I mean, I have two projects. I have my Infinite Visions. Uh -huh. No, no, no. We're talk talking about that song that you wrote for uh, Rob Rock. I will you write. Oh, uh, you will write. You haven't yeah. wrote it yet. No. Okay. Okay. Perfect. So going back to Avalon. Yeah. You know, you mentioned that you had uh, Rob Rock in that first album. Uh, this new album. Can you give us any insight? Any surprises about what, what we can expect? Any? Well, I've been writing like eight songs for now. You have eight songs for okay. that, and I'm gonna write four more. It's like uh, because last album I, I released, it's called Return to Eden. Uh huh. It's Avalon 3. Avalon 3, Return and, to Eden, yeah. Yeah, and in, in this, I, I, I had no control because Frontiers, is uh, they make projects. They don't make bands, you know. Right. It's, I guess they commit to just a few years or something yes. and see if it works out or yes. if not, just move on to the next. And artists pay everything. You right. Know? So I pay the covers, the recordings, the musicians. Oh everything welcome to the music world in 2020 it sucks yes, exactly. right yeah Fuck, it sucks man Fucking sucks. so yeah. uh we spoke about avalon avalon is more of a you know a super group kind of uh project where you invite a lot of uh, amazing musicians to yeah. uh, work with you infinite visions it's yes. a little bit different it's more of a it's a permanent lineup correct it's a permanent yes uh now i it's like a new start it's like a new start, yes, correct. Yes. Now, Infinite Visions, obviously us uh, fans of uh, Stradivarius, we that are familiarized with, uh, with uh, the terms and concepts yeah. used throughout your career, know I, that... I found this amazing singer called Jorge Sergersbo from Peru. Oh, yeah. Because I had 16 concerts here in last September. Okay, yeah. I supported Hammerfall. Well, I supported Hammerfall in Colombia for five gigs, but in many cities... Uh, they Joachim were supporting Ka you. Joachim Kanz, the singer. Uh huh. He, he came to me because we are old friends, like 20 years. Of course. Time. I mean, you guys have been in there in yeah, forever. Yeah. So he comes to me, Timo, like, you're bigger than us here. So <laughs> you have to pay, play after us. You know? <laughs> so in many, many, many cities I played after Hammerfall. Right. And then I met this George. I call him George. Mm -hmm. He's Jorge. So right. And I don't remember this, but he told me that after the show, after, on stage, I threw a beer on his face. Oh, shit. Yeah. And he took it as a good thing, because it is good thing. It's like 
Blackmore thing. It was it's, like an approval. Uh, yeah, no, right? It's a Richard Blackmore thing, you know. Oh, is it? Yeah, yeah. It's a Richard Blackmore thing? Yeah, he's Throw like a that. beer in your face? When you whatever. Do, when you do good? Yeah, whatever. You know. <laughs> yeah. So he says he loved it, you know. Oh, that's great. And this guy is like Kiske or Young Kotipelto. Really? He's, he's that good. You know. So we got Jorge on vocals. Yes. Tell us about the rest of your bandmates. Where did you meet him? Where did you scout yeah. them? The other one is, is Jimmy Pitts. He's a keyboard player from the States. Okay. He's a really, really good guy. Okay. Really. It's like Jens. He's hmm. like Jens. Uh, I guess Virtuoso. Yes. Progressive. Yes. Fella. Yes. Where, which direction are you taking Infinite Visions on? It's like, well, it's, it is Stratovar's music. It's my music. It's your, I mean, it's, uh, you are, Stratovar's music is Timo Tolki's music. Let's, yeah. let's state that, because that's the truth, right? Well, I don't want to say it, but I guess it's true. You know? <laughs> you know? I mean, we were talking about, we were, I mean, we were hanging out the other day, Timo, and we were talking about how, like, um, you know, the staples, the staples in, yes. in, the, in the career of Stratovarius. Yeah. You have been, uh, I, if I say paramount, I think I'm still coming too short mm. on, 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 on how you just carried the banner and the band yeah. throughout, you know what I mean? So it's, I think uh, uh, if, if Infinite Visions has the same sound or a similar sound, yes. I will still adopt it because that's ultimately the Tolki sound, correct? It's Tolki sound, but it's updated sound. It's a what sound? Updated. It's updated. Yes. It's an updated sound. Yes. Like Symphonia. No, it's more like, it's a combination of Scorpions. Ah. There's a lot of scorpions in there, man. Oh, but, yeah? But it's like power metal scorpions. Okay. With the melodies. Of course. You know. Melodies, catchy uh, choruses. Very catchy. Of course. You know, because I wrote all the songs in Prague, Czech Republic. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Okay. I was there in, in February. And, and there I'm like Michael Jackson. <laughs> they follow me everywhere because my ex wife is from there. Oh, yeah? And my ex wife's father is called Karel Gott. That's the biggest singer of fucking Eastern Europe. He really? sold 100 million records. So he is the father of, of my ex-wife. Your ex-wife. Yes. What was the name of the singer? Karel Gott. Karel Gott. Yes. Oh, wow. Gott is German. It means God. It means God. Yes. Oh, wow, man. And this guy was, you know, he loved me. Mm -hmm. He loved my music. He always said, you know, I had this project, Allen Lande. Yeah, which I love, let yeah. me say. So we, he, he, I played him this Come and dream with me, this song. Right. And he said, Timo, how can you write? It's about me. It's like, all the love you give with the songs you sing. Come he's, and dream with he, me. He's a, he's a very kind, he looks like a gentle bear. What do you call a gentle bear? Like, yes. a, you know, kind guy. He looks strong, he's big, but yeah. he's, he, he looks like a real fun kind guy. Yeah. Russell Allen, hell of a singer. Russell is a... Uh, I met him last time about a year ago in Helsinki. Oh yeah? Yeah. I went to see their show and Symphony I Symphony X. Yeah, I met Michael Romeo, I met Lapont, all of them because Rullo, all of them. Because right. we, we toured with them. What do you what do you think about Michael Romeo? Just a little prince. Michael Michael is sick. Sick sick sick, uh, yeah, yeah. sick guitarist, right? He's sick. Yeah. I mean this so, guy but you know, he's a very humble guy. Yeah. He never boasts about his abilities. Never. So he's a normal guy. He likes to barbecue, to drink beer, and all. Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. Just uh, keep it chill, you know. Yeah, you do a great out, guitar, man. but just chill out, have a yeah, good time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's wonderful. So I met them after the show, and Russell was telling me like, Timo, I dance between God and devil, all the time. That's what he told me. That's what he told you. Yeah. I love. Let me say, man, I love that combination, the Jorn Lande and uh, Russell Allen. Yes. It's, uh, there's a song called Obsessed that I really, really like. Yeah. Uh, there's another, uh, Where Have All the Angels Gone? I yeah. don't know if you heard that song. Um, the, the Showdown yeah. is such a good song oh, man, yeah. from him, right? Yeah. Like, he's got this very melodic uh, voice, very soothful as well. Yes. I really like him on, uh, on uh, this, the, the stuff he's done for Avantasia. And he, yeah. uh, Arjun uh, Anthony Lucasen, he also had a band back then with him, right? Yes, he yes. he per, uh, sung for yes, them. He oh, man. So, uh, so many stories, so many musicians that I've you I've been work blessed with. to work with these world-class singers, you know. Man. Elise, Elise uh, Russell, uh -huh. Rob Rock, Kiske, Kiske Koti Pelto. Fuck, I mean, so it makes you really humble. Of course. You know. Yeah, it, it has to, man. But, you know, more importantly, and I think it's very important to highlight this, uh, you've been paramount 
and uh, and very important, a uh, very important influence uh, in the career of those musicians that you're talking about. I mean, Summit. Samet, I mean, we, we, when, when you look at Toby, you look at Tobias Samet, you look at the uh, uh, new generations of Bruce Dickinson. He's yes. carrying the, the flag the and flag the banner yeah. of, 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 uh, of us fans. Yeah. He, got, he got all of his uh, idols together yeah. to make a band uh -huh. and record some amazing stuff. Yes. Obviously, you were included because you were, you were obviously one of his influences. It's a funny story because, you know, I met him in Cologne doing, doing press for episode. Right. And... I had all day booked for interviews in a hotel. And the last, one, the last journalist was called Tobias Summit. So, <laughs> so I, the guy opens the door, this, he's this short. He's that short? He's fucking short. But he's got the presence of a he's mountain. Got, he's, he's a mountain. He's a mountain. He's a mountain. So he comes with a CD player and I'm like, okay. And it's the first thing he says, Timo, I'm not a journalist, sorry. I had to book this interview just to play my music to you <laughs> and so he played the first Ed guy album for me wow and I'm listening to it I I like I like the melodies I like the attitude but the sound is not there do you remember which it was it savage poetry the savage first poetry. but the first edition yes. the, the one that wasn't remastered I guess you know obviously yeah. it was a long ass time ago so it had to be the first edition it's the first right savage poetry so. right 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 and what did this, you think about it I love the songs but I hated production Right. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. so it's I, good writing. When he was young, he was yeah. a good writer, right? Yeah, yeah. I, and I could Im immediately see that this guy is a genius mm -hmm. because he had the attitude, you know, he had everything. So he had the guts to come to me with this CD player and play the song. And he said, I'm, I want you, I want you to produce Vainglory Opera. That's, that's amazing. That's what he said. And that was a hell of an album. That's the one that got him next level. Yes. Next level. And, you know, they came to Helsinki with the tapes and, you know, I heard the tapes and I said, man, what did you do? <laughs> did you record in a bunker or, or <laughs> where? In the restroom. <laughs> where? Because the vocals were so shrilly. Yeah. The drums were horrible and everything. So I said, okay, man, I want to play a couple of solos and I do everything I know about producing and mixing to this. And I did. So I don't really like the, the end result, but it's okay, you know. I think it was... More than that, the songs are great. The, the songs, songs are great. The songs are great. The people love them. Yes. The, the, the people love the songs. They love the album. Obviously, uh, I mean, the, the Ed guy is, is such an interesting topic to me because it's, it's like a ladder. It's yeah. like every 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 album was yes. larger. Yes. It, it, it wasn't. It wasn't. It's not necessarily that it was faster, yeah. but it was larger. You exactly. know what I mean? And uh, and I guess that was translated to having. Well, Avent I was I was always telling him in Helsinki with with this Van Glory Opera thing. Like, right. What is Ed guy? I can. I, there's a, there's a story uh, on the internet about what Ed guy means. Uh, but what did he tell you? He said it's about Maiden. Eddie. It's about Maiden. Eddie. Ed. Guy. Ed Guy. Yes. Oh, that makes sense. Yes. So there's this stupid... That makes more sense than the stupid story that's pro and it's probably true. But uh, around the internet, there's a story that um, I think they called him the Ed Guys back in school or something no, like that. No. It doesn't make any sense. No, that's no, why I never thought no. it was... So it's like the Eddie Guys yeah, from Eddie Iron guys. Maiden. Like and, the Eddie Guys. And these guys are from Fulda. From Fulda. Yeah, it's a fucking small city. Right, right, right. You know. And so I meet this guy and, you know, I mix the record. I play tambourine in Scarlet Rose. It's me. Really? Yeah. You hear this? The moment that you held me tight won't come it's back me. anymore. <laughs> oh, that's you? Yeah. Oh, man. I what, said, what a performance. I said, you have, to, you have to have it. It's like Bon Jovi thing, you know. Right, right. And yeah, they yeah. were so happy about the mix because I put like a lot of reverb. I made it really big. I, I, I'm like that. I make everything big. You know. It was, it was an, it, it still is an amazing song. Scarlet Rose is a great I song. I love the record. Yeah. You know? And I told the Toby, look, man, you play bass and you sing. Don't do that. No. Be a front man. You were born to be that. He was born to oh, be yeah. that. Oh, yeah. Look and, at him now. Yeah. Because I knew already back then that this guy will go to the stars. I, I knew it. And I told him that. Right. You will do great things. You will go fucking far, you know. You told me a couple of times. You, you told me last time we met that uh, he 
he would seek for you for advice that he would talk to you and ask you about Every day. what what can i uh Every day. you know perhaps it's about uh his album his mixing his, uh, his singing he he seek for you for advice what are what are some things that you shared with him well he called me every day, and in the mornings usually. So I'm like, <laughs> I'm sleeping, and I hear the phone like, like hello? Hey, still be here. Okay. What, what, what do you want to know today? So, <laughs> merchandise, record deals, publishing, gigs, appearances, everything. So I told him, look, man, you're, you're a front man, so skip the bass. That was the first thing. Right. Skip the bass. Yeah. And try to really think and feel, especially feel, what do you want to express with your music, you know. And I think already at that time he had this avantage in his mind. But he told me that he wants Kiske. He wanted, to, he wanted him to be in the project. Yes, he told me that. So of course. I said, everybody wants Kiske. Do you, <laughs> you, know? do you know that? Did you hear that? This is something that really shocked me as a kid. And we were talking about Rob Rock earlier. Yeah. But uh, when you look at the, the credits on that album, uh, Kiska comes Ernie. out as Ernie. Ernie. What's the reason behind that, dude? It's Kiska's humor. It's his humor? He didn't I mean, want to be no, I mean, this credited guy has, or what happened? He, he, his humor is great. You, know, you have to understand that. I mean, he's, he, okay, he knows who he is. Right. He knows exactly who good he is. Right. But he's a humble guy. Mm -hmm. He's Christian. Right, right, right. Heavy Christian. So he's so always... He's very... Uh, Full of, uh, he's very uh, uh, a graceful person. Seems he, loves, like. he loves Christ. He loves Christ. Yes, he loves Christ deeply. So he was always telling me. Timo, was this? Sorry to interrupt you, but was, was this like also during the Halloween times? Yes. Was did he was he also a, a Christian well, back he, then? He sort of got into that. After. Know. Yeah. No, in between because oh. they they did like Keeper One, where he was 18. Uh huh. This guy sang, "Tale That Wasn't Right." When he was 18, how can you fucking sing that? It's incredible, right? One of the best ballads that I ever heard. 18? Next to 4,000 Rainy Nights. Well. Or Forever. Yeah, but, you know, then Keeper 2, he was 20. And then they did this uh, Pink Bubbles Go Ape and Chameleon. I got to ask you about that. What do yeah. you think about those two albums? I like all of the Halloween stuff. Really? Even yeah. those? Yes. Because he, he never was shy about what he liked. So, you know, and... and uh, he did this, he composed this song called Longing, uh -huh. which is really about the spirituality. I remember this song. He I remember it. skipping through it. No, don't <laughs> skip. I, you know, I was young, well, I was... Well, skip if you want, but he, you cannot dismiss this song because it's so spiritual. Right. And I know because I was, I was in Japan, we had the same record company, JVC. JVC, of course. JVC Victor. Huge company. Yes, yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Biggest. And it, old as hell, you know, they've been around for a long time too, right? They still are. They still are. Yeah. Yeah. So they told me that Michael, Michael came to Tokyo to do press and he was hugging trees. He was hugging trees. But was he high on something or? He never, no drugs ever. He was just, he was just, uh, he, he's full of love. Yes. Wow. But he, he said that he feels the energy of the trees. You know? mm. So longing is about this, like, finding your inner spirituality and expressing it all the time. Of course. Yeah. But Vaikath, especially Vaikath, uh -huh. was like, look, man, I'm not going to do that. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> so, you know, that's why they got eventually then separated. And he went to this road, which is like, he told me that he read like fucking 8,000 books. He, he read so much that his eyes became bad. Really? Yes. And his eyesight just got screwed up? Or yes. What? Oh, wow. So he lived in Hamburg and he still is there. And, uh -huh. and he was in this house and he's into Rudolf Steiner, all the philosophers. He loves Beethoven. He analyzes Beethoven, all the stuff, you know, and Christ. You know. Of course. So, but I never met the guy. What do you mean you never met him? You actually never interacted with him face never, to face? Never. Wow, it's always a uh, share of recordings, yeah. here we go, and yeah. all of that. Never face to face. Some festival, Vakken? You never ne saw him in Vakken? Ne never. He w I guess he was gone for a long period of time. Yeah, because he was really angry. He was angry at the metal world. Yes. Yeah. Uh, he, was say he was telling things like, it's satanic, you know. Right. I don't want to have anything to do with that shit. So, you know? I don't, I don't want to get 
I don't want to, before we get into another topic, because we're, we're talking about Halloween, no, Halloween we history. Ha we we got to talk about everything because it's good for the people to know this. Because I know, yes. I'm, I'm an insider, so I know yes. all the stories. That's, you know. that's what, that's what, you're absolutely right, Timo. Yeah. That's exactly why, that's exactly why I want to ask you this thing. Yeah. So, I'm a huge Halloween fan, as probably you are. I am, huge. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, I, I, when I was younger, I listened to Eagle Fly Free, hooked me. Uh, and then I, I experienced uh, the evolution of Halloween, which was Andy Darris, yes. his addition. It became uh, uh, a different band, yes. in my opinion, more of a progressive band, yeah. uh, less uh, power metal core, yeah. uh, speed power metal, uh, and more of like, you know, uh, uh, ex uh, I guess exploring different uh, uh, genres within Halloween. Right. But here is my question. Um, my favorite album is The Dark Ride. Uli is Uli in Kush. is in it. He's Uli. my favorite drummer. He was yeah. in Symphonia with you. He's a couple projects with you. He's worked a yeah. lot with you. Unfortunately, uh, yeah. Unfortunately, yeah. I want to talk a little bit more about Uli. Uh, <laughs> yeah. But let me say, let me ask you this. The supposedly the band, uh, Andy, Vicath, Marcus, etc. They were saying that Dark Ride was too dark. Yeah. That it was too uh, heavy. Yeah. And then uh, Seven Sinners, uh, Gambling with the Devil. Yeah. Uh, all of those other albums come out that obviously were they were much darker, yeah. darker lyrics. Mm -hmm. So that's obviously BS. What do you think about that? I think we were robbed of a great upcoming era of Halloween. Yeah. And they gave us uh, uh, these uh, replacements that, and uh, again, I guess it's become I'm old and and uh, and and I and I long for the uh, uh, for the band of my generation. But yeah. what do you think about the new Halloween? Uh, aside from United, which I also want to talk about, yeah, yeah. aside from Halloween United, I'm talking about the, the studio albums without K or uh, Kiska. What do you think about that? Well, you have to understand, you have to sort of know each individual in the band and their preferences and what they like. You right. Know? Like Kai Hansen is the most soulful guy you ever meet. This guy is fucking there. He's so cool, you know. <laughs> Every time I meet him, we have a couple of beers and we talk. And I, I always tell him, look, man, I really admire you. You're one of my biggest influences in metal songwriting. You did Future World, Halloween, all this fucking I'm Alive, right. you know, yeah. all these things. And he's so modest. He said, well, I just wrote them, you know. I was just doing my thing. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know. And he told me so many stories about all the quarrels and stuff. So I know, I know all about Halloween. Wow. I know the whole story. Do you like the first album, Walls of Jericho? Yes. I, I think that my is... My brother loves it, by the way. Who? My brother. Your brother loves, brother, that, loves that album? My brother is called Terro. Terro. He's a web, web designer. Oh, really? Yes. Oh, that's wonderful. And he has a website. Maybe I shouldn't... But it's, Go uh, ahead. it's called Nordic Metal. Nordic Metal. Yeah. Okay. It's huge. Go and check it out. Nordic Metal is Nordic it uh, metal. dot what? Nordic Metal dot com dot com. Yes. Go check out Nordic Metal. Yeah, of course. Because he is, uh, he loved Alice Cooper. He loved all the. He loves Kiss, and I hate Kiss. <laughs> I fucking hate Kiss. I hate Kiss. I hate Kiss. But so Kiss, tell me about Kiss. Like you don't you don't like him? Well, I obviously I like. I was made for loving you. I I, I saw. Lick it up tour with Vinny Vincent in Helsinki, and uh -huh. everybody said his solos are speed up, sped up, uh, speeded up in the studio. Right. But when I saw him, I know it's not, because this guy was fucking amazing. But you know, like Timo, in all due honesty, yeah, like ki compared, like so you could play a Kiss song with like blindfolded and yeah. Okay, so let's try it. Let's get you a blindfold right now, and we got guitars. <laughs> Later. Later. <laughs> no, I like. I I really like. Tears are falling. Okay, tears are falling. That song. Yeah. I was I was so influenced by that video that I painted my Stratocaster purple. Oh yeah. Like Bruce Kulick had. Of course. Yeah. It's raining, and, you know. Now a uh, Bruce Kulick. Um, speaking of Bruce. Yeah. He worked with Toby on Avantasia yeah, and a I couple know. of things. Yeah. Uh, did uh. And, and again, I mean, not to go back, but uh, I know Toby's working on, 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 on a new project. Are you going to be like, uh, when are you going to be on the new Aventasia? When is the voice, when is the voice of the tower coming back? Well, you know. We, he, you have walked yeah. a long way through ages. He fucked me up, this guy. Why, man? <laughs> well, we were in the studio and like he asked me to play a couple of solos for, I think, Aventasia 2. Uh-huh. You know, I play like two solos. Right. And then he said, I need a voice in the tower. Uh-huh. And I'm like. 
what, what the fuck is that? <laughs> what the fuck is that? Yeah, what tower? the fuck is that? <laughs> so he gives me the lyric sheet and just says, just read it, Timo, just read it. So I just read it and they put it down with the pitch, uh -huh. the voice. Yeah, I can know. tell. You have come the long way through ages. That's all I remember. To seal the seven parts of the sea. So I, now. It, it's a, <laughs> do you remember, the, do you remember yes, that part? Yes, of course. I, I mean, come on, say it, Timo. I no. want to hear it. Come on, dude. No, no, come it's, on. No, it's a scary thing. <laughs> it's a scary thing? Yes. Why is that? Well, I don't see myself like that. I'm a normal guy. You're a normal guy? Yeah. But you could be the voice of the tower in some Disney movie. <laughs> I don't know if I want to be that. <laughs> I don't know if so, I want to be that. So on, you were saying the guys from Halloween, they're good people? All of them. I mean, yep. I met them so many times, except Kiske. Except Kiske. Except That's the only one. But I know because I talked to their management, Bottom Row. Uh -huh. Bottom Row is their management. Bottom Row? Yeah. Okay. And they're booking the tour. But I, I guess it's going to be... A spring next year. Okay. And they, eventually they were going to come here. They, they, they actually, there is a huge, now that we're talking Halloween, and again, Timo, yeah. I don't want to go too, too deep into Halloween, but this is something I got to tell everybody. Yeah. There was, in the first date of the United Tour, Yeah. Here. the first gig was I know the story. Here. I know what happened. Do you know what happened? I know from the so horse's mouth. You know it from the horse's mouth? Yes. So we confirmed it. Because we took multiple videos, compared it, yeah. and we could tell that Kiska was doing playback yes, at he that was. gig. Yes, he was. And I'm not sure if there was other gigs that we actually did. he actually did no, playback. No, no, only one. But it, it was not the whole gig. It wasn't the whole gig? No, no. Okay. So their sound guy had two faders. One was because they played to a click. Okay, yeah, so of it, course. It's sequence. Yeah, yeah. So he, w he could hear if it's there. And if it's not, he put the playback and Kiske said in e only email we have only email right of course yeah yeah so exchange. he said like I never wanted to do this but they forced me to do this to do the, the to do the the auto I mean not the auto tune but the the playback. lip sync thing the, the playback yeah. thing they forced me to do the gig he wanted to cancel the gig I'm so glad he didn't I would have been heartbroken I would have been I mean because I tell you we started and and and, yeah. and truthfully I understand. Perhaps if he did it, and he was sick, yeah. he wasn't ready. He was because sick. that was there were rumors of this. Yeah, he was sick. That he was sick. That he yeah. he wasn't ready for the gig. Yeah. But then, honestly, I had waited years to see something like this. Yeah. As soon as the tickets were out, I I the immediately board. got him. I I mean, I'm telling you, I was all over this, yeah. and uh, it was very it was frustrating. But at the same time. Um, it was like a little part of history. You right. know what I mean? Like you were in a gig where Michael Kiske used yeah, playback. Yeah. Like that was crazy. Have you ever met Kiske? Never. So whenever they come here, all of us will go there backstage. We'll go, we'll go and we'll go to the gig and we'll go backstage and yes. we'll talk to him. Yes. And we'll, we'll, we'll get to the bottom of this. Yes, <laughs> we will. Let's definitely do that. Bringing it back and still somehow on the, on the path of Halloween, we have a band by Timo Tolki named Symphonia. Yes. Symphonia is a super project, super band project. I could well, not it was believe. Never, it, it was never a project, it was real band. It was a real band. Yes. I could not believe when I, when I saw the lineup. Yeah. When, I, when, I, when I saw the lineup, when I heard what you guys were gonna do, first of all, again, Uli is my favorite drummer. Yeah. I'm a drummer myself, I, I, I'm inspired by him. Yeah. Um, and when I heard that he was going to be back, I was very excited. Yeah. And then uh, Yadi was obviously yeah. going to be involved. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, this was an incredible super band. Yes. What, what, what happened to it? Well, it was like I heard that Andre moved to Sweden, next to Finland. So the, uh, Andre moved to Sweden? Yeah. Okay. So I got his number because we did a tour for fireworks with Stratowires. That was a long time ago. Yeah. But we played like in Paris, to Le, in Le Zenith, for 7,000 people. Wow. Bruce Dickinson was there. He sang Flight of Icarus with them. Flight of Icarus? Yes. Fly on your yeah. way, it's like yeah. an eagle. He was there. So Fly he, as high as the sun. I met him. Great song. I met him yeah. there. So I met these guys. And, and I saw this Andre Matos on stage, like fucking Freddie Mercury. He mm -hmm. was right there. He took the audience. They ate from his hand. Right. He was so good. It's incredible. Yeah. So we did the tour and I didn't see him. 
or, or heard about him for seven or eight years. And then, and then I heard he moved to Sweden. Mm -hmm. So I got his number and I called Andre, do you remember who I am? Yeah, you're Timo, of course I remember you. Because this guy has IQ of 185 or had. So he, he always was like this, like, oh, well. Was he always wondering, thinking? He, uh, he, he moved yeah, his head a lot. He would do always this. Like this. Always yeah? like this. So, so Timo, uh, maybe we should do something together. So, so right away, I, I bought him a ticket to my home, to Helsinki. Mm -hmm. So I come over, man. We talk. So because I lived at that time right next to the Gulf of Finland by the sea. Wow. And I was doing photography better than this shit. You know. <laughs> <laughs> I had I had fucking <laughs> Canon Mark II with Zeiss lenses. Oh all, yeah, all yeah, of yeah. Them. The Carl Zeiss ones. Zeiss. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And my I took landscape photos, so my my photos were National Geographic style. Wow. All of them. Panoramic style, like big, big, nice photos. Yes, and really, really depth of field. Right. So every morning I went to the shore and I I, I photographed the sunrise. Wow. Every morning. Mm -hmm. So Andre came. And we went to the nature, we talked about things, we remember the tour, Angra, all. I asked what happened, and he told me everything, you know. And he said, I was so unhappy in the band, because I always felt separated from the rest of the guys. I was always this kind of a freak, you know. Within Angra? Yeah, and I like freaks. You yeah. Know? I like freaks. So, we said, okay, let's do a band. Let's write some songs, you know. So I wrote, like, I wrote Fields of Avalon, Come by the Hills, Alina, and uh, Forevermore, or Pilgrim Road. And I flew to his home, to Sweden, and then I met his wife. <laughs> it's like... What was up with her? I mean, she was like typical Scandinavian, because Scandinavian women can be really bad, you know, they, they're like, Bossy as fuck. Bossy as fuck? Yeah. Was she mean? Was, was she mean she to was him? All, because they had a kid. Oh, I see. So all the time he said, Andre, why are your shoes there? They should be there. Andre, change the diapers. Oh. And I, I'm like, I, 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 honestly, I said to him, what the fuck are you doing with this girl? You could have any girl in this world. This guy was handsome as He was fuck. a sought after guy, man. He was. People he loved was, him. No, he was fucking handsome. Yeah. You know. Everybody wanted to Plus fuck. Plus an incredible singer, man. Yes. So, you know, we did the demos in his garage, actually. Oh, yeah? Yeah. It's like a really small place. Wow. So I, I, I had my laptop. Well, the one that I'm going to have after this interview. <laughs> and uh, Sorry, I have to say this. But anyway, so I, I, we recorded that stuff, and like four songs, and we, we sent it to companies and Edel, Edel Records from Germany. Okay. Did that. They, they picked it up, they picked it up right away. Right, right away, they saw the potential. So uh, they gave us a really good budget. Mm -hmm. So uh, we went to the, we wrote, we, we did the drums with Uli Kush in Sweden. Uli, that's the first time I met Uli. You had never met him before? No. So he comes with a train from Germany. Uh -huh. And he's reading this fucking book about brain. About brain? Yeah, he showed me. What does that mean? Like about the size of the brain? No, about no, like philosophy? It, no, it's like uh, the function of the brain. Oh, okay. How, how, like brain and body connection. Okay, okay. So, and I could see that this guy is very intellectual. Uh -huh. Because of course I knew he was. I knew his drumming. So he, he said to me, he, we meet and we, we talk and we have red wine and we get a little drunk and he said, Timo, I have, le I have heard a lot of stories about you, but you're so fucking sympathetic guy. He told me that. I think I can attest to that. You are a sympathetic guy. You're a very, very cool guy. You think? Yeah. Well, well, he said to me that and, you know, we hugged and we said, man, I'm so proud to have you in the studio, you know. So I, wanna pro I really want to produce you, but there's not <laughs> nothing to produce. <laughs> you know, he went to his drums and I mic'd the kit and, you know, like I always do with, always did with Stratovarius. Room mics, 30 tracks of drums. 
you know, because always I, I hear the, the room, and if I hear good thing, I put a mic there. Okay. That's how I work. So you 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 uh you seek for the the good the the, the good, good bounce spots. around the, the good spots around the room. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Always. Okay. So we we ended up with thirty tracks of drums. Thirty tracks of drums. Yes. Oh my God. Okay. And then thing you know and then you know uh, there's a funny video of me and Andre after three weeks of in a fucking cabin in the mountains where we see deers rabbits animals snow so it's called two tire, tired warriors of metal it's in YouTube <laughs> it's 4 a.m. in the morning after the vocals and we are like it's so funny. You have to see it. It's, it's I have to. I have to look it up. What, what? What's it called on YouTube again? Two tired warriors of metal. Two tired warriors of metal. Is Matos Tolki. Matos Tolki. That's how you find it. We have to. We have yeah. to watch that. I'm and definitely say, gonna look that up. I only say yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know this and I, is. I counted the year. Fourteen year. Fourteen years. Yeah. What is he saying at that time? A lot of stuff. But then he cracked up at the end because I said. We wanted to sh shoot this video so you, sh you see us so fresh. And then he cracked up <laughs> completely. He, he cracked up. You know. I got I to gotta tell you that um, it's, uh, it, was, it was very heartbreaking you know, to, to hear what happened. And in, you uh, know, I was in live interview. You were in a live interview when you found out? Yeah, for, to Brazil, in Brazil. It, it was... I am... I am this live interview to a Sao Paulo guy, and suddenly he says, Andre has died. So he got me there. I started crying, and I cried two days. I cried fucking buckets, you know. This can, was my brother. Can we do a shot for Andre? Yes. So we definitely have to. So yeah, I'll, I'll follow your lead on this one, yeah. Because uh, we we can't uh, toast like regular Mexicans. This is for Andre, who's yeah. Brazilian. I I'm really not well, quite sure. I don't think he <laughs> ever was Brazilian. This guy was from Vega. From Vega. Yeah. What is that? Where where's that? Vega. It's, it's a star system. It's a star system. Yeah. Vegan people love us humans, but they say they they know we are not ready. So all the way to Planet Vega. Yeah. This goes to you, Andre. Cheers, mate. Cheers, Neil. So he for was for Andre. For Andre. So, so I made this interview, and the guy suddenly, suddenly says, after talking like forty-five minutes about whatever, asking me how how did I write? How did I do this? I never know how. You know, I never know how I do this. Just comes. Yeah. <laughs> And then he says, did you hear Andre died last night? And I'm like, what? really? I'm like, you know. Heartbroken. Yeah. So I, I started crying in this interview. I'm like, it can't be true. He can't be gone. 46 years. You know. oh, it was a terrible. So, and then terrible later thought. I talked to Raphael Bittencourt of Angra. Rafa, yeah. Rafa, yeah. So he told me the story that Andre was really depressed in the end. He didn't sleep. He took uppers, downers, cocaine, all the stuff, you know. Because this guy, he was not born to play maiden covers in Sao Paulo for 100 people. No. You know. He 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 was a he was a star. He was the best. I, I remember hearing you know, so Latin many compliments child, from everyone. Lasting Child, this song. Yeah. It's Symphonia. We played that live. Right. And there's a video in my Facebook. We'll I put, put the, We'll put uh, a link in the description for this. Yeah, I put it there. So yeah. he was teaching me how to play. And I'm like, Andre, I to, how the fuck? I, there's no way I can play this song. It's like the chords change all the time. It's like <laughs> Chopin, Mozart, Beethoven, all together. But he told me, it's like, dun, dun, dun. He, he, he sang me the lines. Would you say that he was definitely one of the best uh, power metal singers out there? I think he, he, he was the best because he, his resonance in his voice. 
right. was impeccable. When we did In Paradisum, we rented this cabin and it, it was on top of a mountain. No internet, nothing. nothing. We were isolated three weeks. In this, so I built this vocal booth with, with uh, blankets and things and like I put my 5,000 euro mic in there <laughs> and my Pro Tools and all that. I had amazing system. And so he comes, it's 1st of January 2010, after the New Year's Eve. Right. And Brazilians have the habit to jump in the waves seven times. Jump in the... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay, okay. This guy did it in Sweden, in icy water. Oh. <laughs> so he got sick. He got so, sick? Yeah. So 1st of January 2010, he comes to this cabin, goes to the mic. We start with Fields of Avalon. And he's like, Fields of Avalon! <laughs> and I'm like... It's like he had the worst fucking cold in the world. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, Andre, what, what, what is this now? I said... I, I always like, I don't know. So what we did, we went to the local doctor and got cortisone shot to his vocal cords. Really? Yeah. Oh, God. Did that work? Did it help? It worked. Oh, great. But this guy came to the studio unprepared, no lyrics, nothing, Oof. no lyrics. So I said, okay, you don't, have, you don't have lyrics, so you have to write the lyrics, right? Yes, of course. I write them. I write them. So, because all, all the song titles in Paradisum are mine. Okay. Like, like always. All the Stratovarius song titles are mine. They're I, yours. The way I write songs, I come up with the title first, like Black Diamond. Right. Which I wrote for my dog, actually. For your dog? Yes. Why? My dog was called Rape, and in English it's Rape. <laughs> So, you know, I, this is a, I have to tell this because... Please I, tell us this story, man. Yeah, because, you know, Jörg Michael, because I did this, this podcast with Jörg Michael like about three or four weeks ago. And okay. With Jörg, Jörg Michael, the drummer? Yeah. Okay. So he to, it, we definitely have to get us in touch so we can do another one. We can do. Yeah. He, he loves me and I love him. Yeah. Still. I love him too. He's great. He, he's a Stratowice manager, by the way. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Then I guess we're going to have to talk. We have to talk. <laughs> anyway, he told me in the interview, and I don't remember this. He said, so we did episode, right, big hit, big, big, big hit. And then he said, I wrote an email to the guys that I'm writing new songs for next album. And I disappeared for some, and Jörg said, maybe I went to some cabin in the woods. One and a half days later, I say, it's ready. Whoa. Visions. Really? Yeah. I, I, don't, I don't remember this, but it has to be true. Because he said to me in this interview. Talking about visions. Yeah. That guitar, man. Yeah. So amazing. Uh, where, did, where did you get it done? I mean, the paint, all that. Uh, where, where, where would I, you get your, your guitars done? ESP Tokyo. ESP Tokyo. Yeah. yeah? Anyway, because we did our first tour in 94. Uh -huh. Dream Space in Japan. Mm -hmm. Well, I was still singing. So, singing. Yeah. Where did you give up on it? And where did you, when, when did you say, let's get Koti Pelto in here? Well, that was the, that very tour, 94. That very tour? Yeah. I guess something happened along the way? Oh. I have to tell this because it's so funny. Go ahead, man. So, we fly with Lufthansa to Tokyo and we got so fucking drunk. We drank all the beers from Lufthansa plane. <laughs> said, there's no more beer. No more beer. How many was it? Do you remember? 40, fucking, 60, 80? Fucking 100. 100 fucking yeah. beers. <laughs> but there was a crew and everything. So, and a drummer, Tua Molastila, the founder of Satovarius. Tua Mo, yeah, Tuomo, I've, I've, yeah. I, mean, yeah, I remember this name. I remember this name. He was so drunk. He was crawling the aisle to me like, Timo, where's the beer? <laughs> So we, we go to Tokyo and there's like fucking 600 people on, on Narita airport waiting for us with teddy bears, candies, whatever. All sorts of shit. We never, we never knew. We never knew. I was there two years before I saw it, but this was bigger, you know. So we had three gigs. We had Tokyo, Osaka and Nagoya. 
I was singing, but I was a rock star, so I was drunk one week. A whole, a whole straight week? Yes. And how was that? I couldn't sing nothing, so I was like... <laughs> that's where the famous sentence was, sing with me. I said always, come on, sing with me, the chorus. I think, it, I think it's, that is like um, worldwide used no, singer's deal, man. No, but Tuomo and Antti Ikonen, the keyboard player, uh -huh. he, they always said to me, what you really mean, Timo, is sing without me. Sing for me. No, without me. <laughs> I never sang that, you know. I couldn't. So, you know, I, I was so drunk the whole week. And then uh, the JVC guy in a bullet train yeah. says to me, next to me, like, we can, because they are so polite. They don't want to hurt you. So they're like, Timo, we can keep the level if you want, but if you really want to go up, you need a singer, you need a singer. And I couldn't agree more, you know, because I was so frustrated to play guitar and sing. You it's couldn't difficult. be the virtuoso guy that you are Yeah. And, and have to sing at the same time. I mean, the only person that uh, is virtuoso and sings at the same time is Geta Lee. And we can all attest to that from Rush. Do you yeah. like Rush? I like Rush. You like Rush? Yes. One of my favorite bands too. Yeah, yeah. I never understood how he could sit. The uh, drummer play. died. Right. The drummer died. Neil Peart died. Oh. Fucking terrible, man. I, I cried that day. Me uh, it, too. it crushed me. Oh yeah. It uh it, it brought me down. I, I I never. You know you know this and all for all the music friends, Timo, even you included. I mean you you've got even though you're a legend, yeah. you've got influences too, and you yeah. never know how hard. Um, a loss of a person that you never met, but at the same time feels so in touch yeah. with, dies. In this case, Neil Peart. I he felt, wrote all the lyrics for Rush. Yeah. It, it crushed me. It, it, yeah. it was like, because uh, Tom Sawyer for me was, I mean, I remember the age when I listened to it, where I was, my, where my, who showed it to me. KZZ. Yeah, 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 yeah ZZ, you know, exactly. You know, the Rush was the biggest influence for Tuomo, the drummer. Yeah? Yeah. What kind of what role did they play in your upbringing, and 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 if if it wasn't Rush, who was your main influence in all of this? In the beginning, yeah, Abba, Beatles, Abba Beatles, The Purple, Wow, Rainbow, and then I I got this compilation which had had Rush, Closer to the Heart. Oh yeah, and the man yeah. who's so right places yeah, yeah. will be the ones to start. It's fucking. Uh, and I hear the song. It's an amazing I, song. I'm, I'm like, and Def Leppard, Def Leppard. So you got a compilation of uh, of several bands. Yes. Okay. Okay. And Rush was included in there with yes. Closer to the Heart. Yes. It's a great. And Def song. Leppard was with High uh, High and Dry. Okay. Yeah. You know. Do you like Def Leppard too? Fuck man. They're My good, right? biggest idol in in uh, producing is Matt Lange. Oh yeah. Yes. But who's your biggest, biggest idol in the music world? Blackmore. Yeah? Richie. Yeah? Richie Blackmore. He, he's the reason why I play guitar. Because I was, because my father committed suicide when I was 12. Okay. I almost saw it. And then we moved to another city, uh, town, village, called Bird Forest. Mm -hmm. We had a swimming pool. I had my own room. Aqu my my father always had aquariums. He liked that. He loved. He I was, guess that's he was a where nature guy. That's where the dolphins come from. Yes. Yes. Okay. And okay. he he taught me to listen to Abba, Beatles, Uriah Heep, and my father is the reason why I I'm a musician. You know, he gave me that longing. I wrote Destiny melody when I was 12 after he died. I wrote it after he died, you know. You based all your music on emotions. A lot of it. I'm 150% emotional guy. <laughs> you know, I, I like to think I'm a good guy, you know. But there are a lot of people who think I'm an asshole. But if they would meet me face to face, they would love me right away. Who have you had uh, these tough situations with like have you had any any trouble with with people lately have ev everything okay with you everything all right the worst was this singer claudia pearl claudia pearl yeah is she local 
Mexico City. Where's she from? Mexico City? Yeah. Okay. What about her? Well, she was like, um, I put an ad to Facebook that I'm looking for female singer. Right? Like Miss K? No. We'll, Miss we'll talk about that later. Yeah. Miss K, forget it. But we talk about that. But so I got like 100 applications and I, I listened to them all. And this girl was the best. So I get her WhatsApp. I call her. And the first thing she does, she shows me her tits. That's the first thing she does? Uh, hey, this is my, my rehearsal. Pass. This, yeah. is, this is my... Uh, <laughs> yeah. She did that. Yeah. Okay, and then? So I wanted to write songs for her, with her. So I invited her to Helsinki. Okay. And then the idea was to record everything in Mexico City. Right. But then she flew back there and we had a plan that I come there. So I booked my ticket for three months to Mexico City. So I, I, I go to the plane and in the Helsinki airport, I call her in WhatsApp and she's in the Hooters in Mexico City. Okay. I'm so happy, like, yeah, come here, Timo, come. And you're like, Hooters, yes. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, who, who is it? So I land. An all American restaurant. I by land the way. to Benito Juarez airport. <laughs> yeah. She blocked me in WhatsApp. Really? Yeah. So let so, me get this straight. You get to Mexico, she blocks you. Yes. After having arranged a project. Absolutely. Yeah. And wow. then I'm there, I'm like, I know nobody from here. But thank God, I, I knew some people who got me there with their family. Yeah. And it was that one week, I got one email from her that only said, I need my space, nothing more. I need my space. And this girl in Helsinki was always calling me genius. Always, like, you're genius, you know. Women? You know what she did? She <laughs> filed restriction order. She filed a restriction order on you? Yeah. But why, Timo? Did you do anything? Nothing. Never. I treated her with total respect. So you treated her with respect. Yes. You offered her a, pro uh, a project to come work on. Come and compose some music. Yeah. Let's go back. And then she still just yeah. denied this? So like then, because she never gave me a reason, so I had to think. And the only conclusion I could come up with that is that uh, she planned the whole fucking thing to get publicity out of me. And now, just now, she, leaves, she released her solo album. Have you listened to it? I don't want to. <laughs> she's, she's not talented at all. She's not talented no. at all? No? No. She's nothing. So I don't like want to say it, but what I hear is not there. No. So... But somehow, because I trust people too easily, you know, and I trusted her. Okay. And, but she betrayed me. And I have a lawyer in Mexico City who tells me I have to sue this girl for the time spent, for the money spent, you know, all these things. But, you know, I don't want to do that because I am a loving guy. I can tell, man. You are. I, I forgive to my enemies. Mm-hmm. I have to, because I don't want to have bad karma. I don't want to have this. So whatever I went through th with this girl has to be there. I had to go through this, you know. It's part of life. Yeah. Do you see a lot of, um, now that you've become, so obviously, you know, we're going to talk Stradivarius because, um, let's, let's get into Stradivarius yeah. because it, it, it's, it's, the, it's the big theme. Yeah. And uh, we can't get away from it. So um, a while back, a few years back, I hear on the media that you're giving away the rights to Stradivarius, yeah. that you're telling the boys, go ahead and work with yeah. the name, yeah. go ahead and tour. I'm all good with it. What's going on with that, Timo? What's going on in your mind? We're going to talk about the Piorno Rock um, uh, incident, yeah. but which happened before. Yeah. 
As a matter of fact, let's talk about Piorno Rock. So yeah. the the yeah, man, come on, let's let's go let's go by time here. Fuck. So and and, no. and 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 I know what happened to you that time. I know what happened. I know the background story, but I think everybody in the world needs to know what happened. But also hear your side of it. What happened, Timo? Come on. Fuck, man, don't don't do this to me. I think we need another tequila then. Well, I was manic, of course. Because you don't invent stuff like that if you're not manic, right? So I wrote the fucking script like a Hollywood with, in Word. Like this week happens this, next week happens this, everything. I wrote it. I sent it to the band, they accepted it. So we went to all of it. They, they accepted it? Yes. Now, they accepted it what's happening now like it gets launched and then everybody all of a sudden says i don't know what's going on i don't know what's going on with timo so what yeah, happened there jens was the only one who was with me jens was with you yeah i guess because he pissed on you so that's why he pissed on me on forever <laughs> tell you got to tell everybody about that story you got to tell everybody well, about that story what happened there dude come on that shit well, that shit doesn't happen like i guess in band i've been in bands too and i'm and i guess a lot of our are the people I, that are I, listening I to us have been in bands? But I don't like, know if I want to tell this, but I, I, I I've never, I've, I've feel, been close I, to guys, I but so, I don't know how close as far as they piss on me. What happened? I to feel you? so ashamed of this, but go ahead, so brother. I, 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 I printed the shirts to all the guys, like black shirts with white letters. Okay. My shirt was Jesus is coming. Uh huh. In the back, Jesus is going. <laughs> I did this. What was the other one? Uh, Jens said, I have AIDS. <laughs> and Yari had, fuck me. <laughs> so the whole show was planned. Right. So I come to the stage and I drink vodka, which was water. I had Stolishnaya bottle with water. Okay. And I come to the stage drinking this water. And everybody sees me, of course. And I go to the mic and I say what everybody thought, what the fuck is happening. I say, que coño pasa? Que coño pasa? Que coño pasa? The Spanish people. Right. And you know what, was the, what they did? They started throwing me with ice cubes, coins, everything. They started attacking you? Yeah, big time. Wow. What did you do afterwards? This was the essence this was the that's what i wanted you know that was the stunt you know that was a stunt yeah what did you want to get out of this timo publicity uh, publicity yeah you wanted to let everybody know that we, uh, we got publicity you sure did so because they told me we had a server in finland they called us what are you doing everything is collapsed there's like a million people visiting the, the page so <laughs> What the ha what's happening, you know? And my brother was the web, web designer at that time. Right, right, right. So he wrote all my statements, like I'm in my library, which I never had. I'm in the library and Kabbalah book falls. And I said, it must be Jesus. It must be Jesus talking to me, you know? So wait, Timo, so <laughs> let, let's take this by steps because I know, th I know this incident. I actually made a made a video for it, which you can find in our channel. But let me ask you something. So, you you got did you get stabbed? Never. It was one here and like a punch or something. No, it was. was it? Uh, I think it was. You had you had like a band aid no, right it's here. Like a yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. It was somewhere episode. here. So, so, somewhere here. Somewhere here. So it was a makeup artist in Helsinki. And you had an eye patch too. No. He, Supposedly they hit me to the face. Okay. So he made a black face with the makeup. And when we f flew to this porno rock, which we call porno rock. Porno. Yeah. It sounds like porno. Every time I read it, I was like, we said man, por porn rock. I, I, go to that I always said porno rock. So, yeah. so we, we go to Lufthansa plane and the fucking engine blows up. The other engine. So the captain says, Everything is okay. We have to return. 
And there was a fire brigade and everything when we landed. Right. And we just changed the planes. Okay. So we go there and, but all was planned beforehand, before the festival, you know. So, w hold on. This whole thing about the plane, was that part of the stunt? Like, no. that was fake? That, that no. actually happened? That happened. That actually happened? That happened. Okay, so we got the stabbing. That did yeah. not happen. No, never. We had Miss Kay. You announced her. Dude, like, where did you get this girl from? Who the hell is this girl? She was hot, but at the same time, she was not. Like, I couldn't tell, you know? Because Finnish women are huge, and I'm Mexican. I'm so short. I don't fucking understand. What was this? Who is Miss Kay? And where did you get her from? Where did you pull her from? It's just a girl, a singer, but she never sang a note. She was a singer for Stradivarius, but never sang a note. Yeah. And she got so much publicity in Finland. Timo, she what? She was in every fucking magazine, in front page. I'm going to put on, we're going to put, after, with post-production, we're going to put on this picture on there. But I want you to tell me this one, man, this one. I want to know, what the fuck was that red liquid? And are you a real Kabbalah follower? <laughs> What happened? Are you a Madonna fan? What the hell happened? No, Come on, man. dude. Pour but, it all out. I mean, it was just fucking stunt. You know, I don't follow Kabbalah or fucking anything. I'm not religious at all. You know, I just did it to entertain people. Right, right, right. Know? And the Kabbalah thing and Miss K, I just, she got in touch with me by email. Uh huh. You know, and I told her, we have this thing going on. So, if you are a singer, I give you so much publicity in Finland that you can do your solo record, which I will produce. It was obvious that you could bring her along, have her for like a quick minute, and then she could have done her own career. Because in Finland, obviously, you are... We recorded the album. Huge. I recorded the album. You so. recorded this yes. album? Yes. You have this album? Yes. I need to listen to this album. Miss K album. Which yes. which album was this? No, it's never released. Never released. No, but I have was the it song. Stradivarius songs? No. Miss K songs. Miss K songs. Yeah. Because because what I really did was to provoke people. Right. I wanted to direct the hate towards me. How w why would you do that, Timo? Why would you direct the hate towards you, my friend? Because why? Of, because of United. I love that song. Yeah. That I, I love that song. Let me overstate this. Look, man. I fucking love this song. Look, man. We yeah. should always forgive, right? We should. Yeah. yeah. So I wrote the United song to be like the anthem of after what everything would happen, that we are back together with everybody. So, but what I did not understand is I could not take the hate. So I was hospitalized in 2004. I collapsed. I have a nervous breakdown. And Miss K was there in the pictures like this with the blood. She was like that. Yeah. yeah, I remember that. I remember that. And that's what I wanted to tell the fans. Like she had know. a heart too. She had some bullshit. Like remember do you remember that picture? Fake blood. It was fa I'm sure. It, but she uh, had, we, she we was signed, like Ugh. we had a big contract with Sanctuary Music. Yeah. Which we signed with blood. And everybody was saying, how can you sign a contract with blood? I said, I bought it. The, I bought the fucking blood. It was in a can. Yeah. <laughs> the so Halloween store. Just, yeah. Yeah. You know, man, wash it. Right, right, so, right. And I could not believe the amount of hatred they generated to me. And in the end, I could not take it. So I collapsed, which was the best thing that ever happened to me. You know. Did you say it was the best thing that happened yes. to you? Yes. Okay. Because my neurotic structure had to collapse because it has to in everyone. We all have that. Yeah. You know, and when you are really honest with which you have to be to yourself, it collapses. It's like a old building. You break it down and you build a new one. Right. You know? And that's what I did, you know. And slowly we got back together. We played in Gods of Metal in Italy. We started doing these shows. I felt really bad still, but we did this black album of Stratovarius. Talk to me about that album. That that yeah. is uh, uh, an album that I definitely like. I think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but it was a big change from Elements. Elements had Elements Part One and Two are my favorite Stratovarius albums because I believe I you. 
Yours too? Yeah, yeah. I think you reached a, a peak. You reached a peak of production. Yeah. Songwriting level. Um, Jörg Michael. Imaging. Jörg Michael in the studio. He did this to me. Like, Timo, I, I, I love you, man. He rubbed your head. Yeah. Yeah. I love the drums. What did you do? He was amazing. When I, f when I first listened to Find Your Own Voice, I had that's to. That's another story. I had to put shit, all of my shit down. That's I had to forget about all of my favorite drummers and I had to say, how am I going to play Find Your Own Voice? I follow, it's, an, it's a samurai code. Okay. It's called Bushido. Bushido? Yeah. Like a blade, Bushido blade. No, Bushido no. is like 12 principles. Okay. Different principles. I follow this under code in okay. my life. Every fucking morning, every day, every night. Tell us about tell us about this. It's about hundred percent honesty, uh -huh. sincerity, loyalty, kindness. You want to help people. It's a samurai code, you know. I think this is a doctrine that we can all adopt and follow, man. That sounds great. You can Google it. It's there. Yeah. And I did this album, Sana, War Warrior of Light. Warrior of Light, of course. It's all there. All the principles. Right. I designed the booklet. I took the photos. I designed everything. Right, right, right. It's my design. Photos, Photoshop, everything. And still today, when I wake up in the morning, I follow this. Be kind. Be kind. Be people. kind, be, be good, respect yeah. each other. Yes. How can you be... Okay, I got to say this. Like... You've got, you need to have some really, like, deep, you have to be, like, really deep in touch with your feelings, with your mind, to write such amazing songs as you mind have. Mind is fucked. The mind is fucked? Yes. So where do, you, where do you find that inspiration? Mind is conditioned. The mind is conditioned? Yes. It's a twisted mind. Mind is fucked completely. So where do you find that inspiration for such beautiful songs that you've written? Well, you guys, you guys have the word corazón. Right. Corazón is it's heart. In, it's in every fucking song here. Corazón. Yeah. So you've given your corazón, your heart, yes. to every single song that you've written. My heart, my soul. I'd like to ask you. It's a, uh, honestly, it's a, uh, it's a little bit of a of a mix of a curated list of the songs that are my favorite. Sorry about that. But it's also songs that are very deep. Songs that I have uh, have a very um, deep meaning that deliver a message yeah. and and when you st when you finish listening to it you're like wow i need a break so this is the list of the songs that i want you to describe to me and tell me how you actually wrote the song how you came up with the concept for the song okay are you ready yeah here we go so the first song that i want to ask about is uh destiny how yeah. did you write that one well i wrote the main theme after my father killed himself when i was 12 you know and I almost saw it. I was this close to, s to see it. So he's, uh, he's gone, Tommy. I'm 12. And I started listening to ABBA and Beatles when I was five. So I was very knowledgeable about music already at that point. Right. So we had an organ at home. So I'm alone in this room and I just I write the fucking melody when I was 12. You just came up with that. You like the melody. You, you, I, I, think, I think we all know that you are a, a virtuoso, uh, a genius at just writing. I'm not a genius. I'm melodies a that stick no, to you. I'm, I'm, no. you're, you're very no, but good. I, I want to say that when I wrote this melody, I, I even had the lyrics. The most impactful lyrics to me from that song, Destiny, is up. And I've, I've sang it to a girlfriend. I've sang it to myself when I've broken up with someone. It's time to say goodbye. I know it will make you cry. I know it will make you cry. Yeah. You make your destiny. I know you'll find your way. Yeah. When you tell me, as right now as you're sharing the meaning of that song to me, I'm coming to understand it. I wrote many songs for my father. Forever is my father. For him, Forever for him. Yeah. Is, is also yeah. for him? It was uh, also part of uh, my list. Yeah, and Destiny is like, I had the lyrics like, why did you leave me? That was the lyric. 
So these seven notes or whatever. And then in 98, when we went to the studio with Strato, for, for, because it's a divorce album. I got divorced from, my, I have a kid who is 31, Nina, Nina Maria. Nina Maria. Yes. How many kids do you have? <laughs> Officially or unofficially? Officially, how many do you have? One. Come on, unofficially? I don't know. <laughs> you were saying about, um, you were saying, you were telling us about the song that you've written. Yeah, the, I mean, it was like, um, I, I, ha I had to write these melodies. And then when the time came to, to write the Destiny album, which is, which is a divorce album. Right. 4,000 Rainy Nights is for, for my second wife. My favorite, my favorite ballad, my, 4, my, 4,000 Rainy Nights. Can you yeah. tell us about, how, how did you write 4,000 Rainy Nights? It's, it's my, my, my daughter's mother I divorced. Okay. So I counted like 12 years together, and I counted 4,228 nights. 4,228 nights. That's how many nights you spend with her? 4,228. But it couldn't sound 4,228 nights. Right. It wasn't going to sound Actually, right. first it was called 3,000. 3,000 rainy Timo, nights? But Timo couldn't pronounce it. He always said three, three, 3,000. I three. said, Timo, you, you can't say three. You can say three. 3,000 3, yes. rainy so I, I, I nights. I said 1,000 here and there. Fuck it. So, <laughs> so I said, sing, sing 4,000 rainy nights. 4, I'd be with you. Nights. 4,000, yeah, that's 12 years, man. That's an incredible, incredible song. It was not only Rainy Nights, of course, but I am, I am a melodramatic guy. So when I write songs, you know, I, I can do this. You know? I, don't, I don't know why, but it really connected with me. That, that is one of my favorite songs. It's deep. I've listened to it when I'm extremely sad. I've drank to it. I've, I've done so many things to that song. Please, I mean, if you haven't listened to it, 4,000 Rainy Nights is one of my favorite songs. But now we go to when I was younger, when I was hungry, when I, was, when I wanted life, I wanted to grab it by the horns, I was a drummer, Speed of Light. How the fuck did you write Speed of Light? Well, That's before solo. The, before that, I have to say about 4,000 Rainy Nights. Please. Like, if you have a girl you really love, you know, mm -hmm. if you find this, give her everything. Tell her hundred times a day you love her. So we, you know, tell her that. They need to hear it. Let's go. You know. What is it? This song I wrote in three minutes. No way. Yeah. Three minutes. Yeah. It's less than the actual song is the, the yeah. length. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if you remember I tell that. you one story. Ronnie James Dio was my friend. Was he your friend? Yes. Yeah? I had his number. Really? I talk to him all the time. Okay. So he comes to festival in Finland and I go there, you know, to meet him. And there's this line, fucking container, horrible backstage, but he's just sat there. And there was one guy before me and he asked Ronnie, how can you sing like that? You know what he answered? What did he say? Because I'm so good. <laughs> and then he showed him the devil horns. No, <laughs> he was just so fed up. People telling him those shit all the time, you know. So the guy went, I, Ronnie, thank you so much for inviting me. This guy was a gentleman. He was this short. Yeah. His ass was like this. <laughs> His this. ass was that big? Yes. Come on, uh, can we get a, a zoom on that ass? Look at that ass. Like How this. big was that ass? This. <laughs> that's Ronnie. That's. His ass was like this. That's Ronnie James Dio's ass. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, actual size. <laughs> so I go, I, I greet Ronnie and say, thank you so much for inviting me yeah. to this gig. So I, I go out from the backstage and I, I look to the clouds. I see two rainbows in the fucking clouds above the dressing room, right there, you know two rainbows. And then he puts me a chair to the stage. A chair? Chair. On the stage? S yeah, to sit there. Right. I'm like five meters. I'm here, Ronnie's by the trees. Right over there? Yeah, yeah. this tree. Which is not far enough, by no, the way. No, uh -huh. there. Yeah. And he sang Gates of Babylon, Ugh. 
all the, yeah, all everything. I never hear so much, so loud monitors, only vocals, only vocals. And after every song, because the guitar player was Greg Goldie, uh -huh. like an American guy, really good player. Right, 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 right. Greg Goldie. So every song, after every song, Ronnie went behind the Marshall stacks. He bought a towel, and he was like this. He just shut down for a minute. He was connected to some force. It was evident, you know. He was really serious. Like, and then he goes back and 30,000 people do this. 30,000. You have any idea how that looks like? And 30,000 people worship the guy. And he was always a gentleman. He was so nice, you know. And then I gotta tell you this because I was playing in Italy, Bologna Guitar Festival with Ingve. Mm -hmm. And Ingve, everybody talks shit about Ingve Malmsteen, right? Oh, you were playing with him? Yes. Not together, but in the same gig. In the same gig, right, yeah. of course. So I met Ingve many, many times. And he was so nice to me always. You know, he said, Timo, I, 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 I like your stuff. I like your songs, but you copy me. He, he said that. He would say that? Yeah, he said to me. God damn. I said. I don't think so. Some of the songs. I said, Ingwe, man, when I heard Rising Force, yeah. you, you did exactly what I wanted to do at that time. Exactly. Because I was playing eight hours a day from 16 to 26. Eight hours. I woke up. I That's played all you would do? Eight hours. Really? I slept with my guitar. My guitar was next to me in the bed. I know guys like that. Yeah, I was I like that. I definitely know guys like that. I was like that. Yeah. And I, I had an ABBA poster, ABBA poster. So first thing I woke up in the morning, I see this blonde Anietta Feldskog from ABBA. Like, oh. <laughs> yeah. So 10 years, eight hours a day. And I met Ingwe maybe five times. Right. And every time he was so fucking great to me. Amazing, man. So I cannot say nothing bad from the guy. Of course. I can't. Right, of course, I understand. Yeah, no, no, you got it. Because you have to, you have to acknowledge this talent, that he's the best. He was incredible. He, was, he, he is fast he's as fuck. He still, he still is. He's fast as fuck. He's not he's only incredible. the fast. It, it, it's, it, it's the expression and, and, and everything, you know. Right, right, right. But what he needs is, because I was, I was in touch with Michael Vesquera, his singer. Uh-huh. And I asked Mike, how did Ingwe treat you? He said, with respect, always. But all the other ones, like, fuck off, <laughs> you know. And Jeff Scott Soto. Jeff Scott, who's uh, actually touring with uh, Sons of Apollo, Mark Portnoy and the boys. Don't get me started on Portnoy. Uh, Bumblefoot is there. What do you think about, what do we think about Portnoy? What's going on with Portnoy? What do you mean, don't get me started on porn? What, what, what's wanna, wrong with them? You want to tell me the story? Well, you want to tell the story. Well, I play in this Bologna Guitar Festival with Ingve, So I play Lonely Rock and Roll yeah? on stage with Michele Luppi, okay. who, who is a keyboard player of Whitesnake. Right, right, right. And he was in Vision Divine. I produced many albums. Vision Divine yeah. is the shit. By I, the way, it's I, awesome. I produced two albums. Right, yeah. right, yeah. So he's in Whitesnake. But he he was he's in White Snake and I play Lonely Rock and Roll. Mm -hmm. In this moment, he's dying in Houston, Ronnie, stomach cancer. God. And I I had scheduled guitar clinics next day, so I play my gig and I fly to Houston. Right. I land and I see in the news Ronnie Dens Ronnie Jensen is dead. He's dead. I was like. My friend is dead. He's gone. This, this guy, <laughs> this guy. He is he gone. he was a legend. He, he, he is a legend. He 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 is a legend. Yes. He uh, there is a, uh, you know, Timo. There is there is a story, um, that's been going around on socials. I don't know if I don't know if you ever heard it, but it's about a uh, 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 Toby. Reaching out to uh, Ronnie James. Yeah. And it was around the time that he was doing all this Aventasia things, yeah. you know. Um, he reached out to him 
and apparently the wife answered the, the phone call. When did Dio? When did Dio? Yeah. When did Dio answers the phone call from uh, Toby and it says, yeah. "Hey, like, uh, so you want, uh, so okay, so you want Ronnie James to be on the sh on the on the on the album and all that?" Like, she didn't even get that message to Ronnie. Yeah. She just said no. He's yeah, not yeah. interested in that. Oh yeah. And and that would have been like. Um, Toby's like I guess dream like he, he he keeps on saying it how that would have been like Toby's uh, the best participation yeah and that never happened yeah like how do you feel about that I think that he, uh, maybe Wendy Dio robbed us from a great collaboration what well, do you how do you feel about that well, Wendy was always very protective of Ronnie I mean they were together like for the years but they stopped they were not lovers anymore just friends you know mm-hmm so she told Ronnie that because Ronnie had a lot of girls, of course, everybody you know on tours who, who, who wouldn't want to be with Ronnie. Right, know? right, right. This fucking voice, you know. My first album was Rainbow on Stage, 79, where he sings Catch the Rainbow, Kill the King. Kill the man, King is one of my favorite Rainbow Mountain. songs, yeah. man. It's so fucking amazing. Anyway, I, 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 I play Lonely Rock and I land there and I hear. Dream Theater is supporting Iron Maiden in Houston. Dream Theater is supporting Iron Maiden in Houston. Yeah. I can so, see that. Yeah, so I go there. I call uh -huh. to Jens. Can you, uh, can you arrange me pass, backstage pass? Right. Of course. So I go there to backstage, and there's Portnoy. <sighs> what did you say? He comes to me like, I know who you are. You know who I am. I say, of course I know who you are. I love images and words. I love everything you ever did. Right. And he says, I, I, do, I do everything in this band. I do set lists. I do merchandise. Everything. I decide. I decide. And Jordan Rudess, the keyboard player, he comes to me like this, like a fucking alien. He looks at me like I'm... Like you're fucking Timo. No, no, no. What he, does he look like? He, he's what like, is he seeing you? Like an alien. He, he was like out of this world. And Petrucci was there, you know. The bass player was there. But Portnoy was fucking arrogant. So at that time, I, I knew they're going to skip him. I just knew. I knew it's going to happen because this guy was so full of himself, you know. So full. And Dickinson was there. Murray. Everybody. Janik. Right. He was there. Yeah. All of them. Nico. I met everybody. And, and I asked them, like, do you know? Well, I didn't, I didn't say directly. I just said, I'm Timo, you know. Right. I said, I'm Timo. And, 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 and I, I remember Nico McBrain saying, like, are you the guy from Stratovaris? <laughs> I like your drummer. I like yeah. your drum. Well, Jorg is better than Nico. I mean, you, what, what is, what you is, can leave your thoughts on the, on the comments. What is better? But he said that, you know. And, and so I saw the show and uh, everything. And I met James Labrie, right. who, who was a really cool guy, you know. James is a cool guy? Yeah. yeah. He was, and he is. He's got a great voice. Yeah. And, you know, I have to tell this story because the first time I met Kotipelto right. was in 95. Right, right, right. I put an advertisement in a Finnish music paper. Two guys answers. Kotipelto and another guy. Uh -huh. and Who's the other guy? Who is a fuck? So, <laughs> so I, I knock his door. Right. I knock his door, Timo's door. You know, you know Timo's what? Timo Kotipelto's door. I knock, door, yeah. door. I went okay. to his home. And okay. he, the door opens and I see this beautiful guy with the long blonde hair. Like, I say, I say, fuck man, this this guy is fucking star already. How he looks like. So I go in and he plays me one of his songs. And I still remember the song. Which one was it? Do you remember that? Another day, like Dream Theater. Another day. Yeah. Um, so he sings. He plays another day. Yeah, but it's a different song. He what is it? 
five notes. I hear five notes. Him singing, five notes. Uh -huh. And I say to Timo, "Look, man, you, you have everything I've been looking for <laughs> as a singer." And do you know what he said? Can you please listen to the whole song <laughs> before you say that? Yeah. So, like, hunting high and low. How the how the hell did you come into writing that? Like, well, my theory, my theory of writing. It's so catchy. Yes. It's so like. Oh, my, my, I, my my theory writing catchy catchy chorus is this. One finger in the piano. I am hunting high and low. That's the thing. I don't know if production can focus on this, but like he's Tolkien's talking about like writing music with one finger because yes. it's it's in it's an easy melody in yeah. the piano. Yeah. It's an easy melody, but at the same time it catches you. Yeah. So I am hunting high and low. It's one one finger. Seven notes. Can you tell us another uh, example of that? When we came to South America in 97, yeah. for the first time, to yeah. Brazil, in, to Recife. Mm -hmm. So we come to this beach because the festival was at beach. So we go to this fucking seven star hotel, whatever. So we go to the hotel, we see the whole beach. There is no stage. <laughs> we hear hammering. These guys were building the stage. Mm. And we were scheduled to go at 1 a.m. We ended up at five. And Andre Matos was there and he said, it's normal here in Brazil. This is what we do. Yeah, it's what we this do. is it's our shit. There's nothing wrong. Yeah. So I play Will the Sun Rise. Will the Sun in Rise? In the Pacific Ocean. When the sun fucking rises. <laughs> I saw it. I played the reef and the sun was coming up. It's amazing. It's one of the best memories of my career. Wow. Yeah. We're I play about, will um, the sun rise when the sun actually is rising. So in like the equator. So like we're talking about hunting high and low. Yeah. How did you come up how how did you come up with that with that chorus, which is what I'm most intrigued about? It's um like hunting high and low can be like a concept of like you're searching everywhere for an answer. Yeah. How did you come up with that song name, then the song itself, and then this video like shot in like Japan? What Finland, was this? Finland. It was Finland. Yeah. Was it with like uh, actors like from another yeah. from from Asia? Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Um, what did you want to transmit in that in that album or in that video itself? Well, because I got divorced with Destiny, and then after that, I was so free from all the baggage. Right. I felt so fucking free, and I got really spiritual. I read three thousand books. Three thousand. Yeah. God damn. Audio tapes. It's a lot of fucking I went books. to seminars and everything, right. and really opened me up. So I wrote Celestial Dream. Uh huh. Mother um, Gaia. Ma Mother, Mother Gaia. Gaia. Mother Gaia. Mother you know. Gaia is one of the songs that I want to talk to you about. Yeah. Mother Gaia is more of a about like you know being in touch with like what's going on in the present, what's going on in life and that's, the world. That's a scary thing. Because what the hell is going on, Timo? That's exactly what's happening now. That's exactly what's happening now. Yeah. The world is reacting back. Yeah. What can we do? What do we do? Well, I think what we have to do is to be honest. So your presence in Finland, Timo, um, you obviously inspired a lot of musicians in Finland, including guys from uh, Sonata Artica. We've got, uh, obviously, Nightwish. Yeah. We've got Children of Bodom. Yeah. Um, you know, what do you think about the metal scene in Finland and where is it going to? Where's it well, going to right now? I actually came up with the name Sonata Arctica. It's Sonata, my, it's you my, came up with that? Yes. He's a, he's a, uh, the manager came to me and said, what would be a good name? Really? Yeah. So I said, Sonata Arctica. They're incredible songwriters. And, and Tony Kakko is a very good friend of mine, but he, he writes the most horrible lyrics. Really? Oh, you think so? Man, how can you write? I'm walking in the cool air without underwear <laughs> what, do you think about, it, what do you think about the end of this chapter that is one, one of my favorite now, ballads now, now that i i found the whore in you how, <laughs> how can i man i said to tony how the fuck can you write this shit it's like now that i found the whore in you how can i say no right you know but tuomas holopainen is a very good friend of mine is he right yes yeah we love each other. And this guy, you, if you meet this guy, you know, he's so humble. 
So um, I mean, so N- Nightwish was a band that broke through the um, man. They broke through all of genres. Yeah, I guess because they were female fronted. I'm not sure, yeah. but they they were they had such a. Uh, Tarja is a bitch. Who Tarja is a bitch. Tarja is a bitch. Is she real difficult to work with? Tarja is. Everybody hates her in Finland. Everybody. Really? Yeah. She was like. Because she's married to Marcelo Cabuli and I Argentinian, no, uh, Argentinian yeah, guy, well, right? I'm not a violent guy, but if I see this guy, I'm gonna fucking hit him because <laughs> I never hit anybody in my life, you know. But you would hit this fucking guy. Yes. What would that be? What 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 well, did he do? What did he do to you? He sold tickets behind our back. He printed merch behind our backs. He printed tickets behind our backs. Oh, a guy. everything. Yeah. Whole Latin America on Destiny tour. Oh God! And it, yeah, we found out later. So this guy is like, and Tarja is with her. And, and in Finland, you know, you have to understand, Tarja said to Tuomas, the most lovable guy in, on this earth, in in the plane, I don't need Nightwish, you need me. Ugh, you need me. She sure like proved her wrong, right? She proved her wrong. So they fired her with a letter, and. The next day, it was all over the news in Finland, everywhere. So, and she was like, "I don't know why they, why they treat me like this," but that's a fucking lie, you know, because she was, she had like demands like, "I want this piano in the hotel room," and then she goes, "It's not the right color. <laughs> It's white. I want it black." A total diva, I guess. More than that. Wow. You know, more than that. So. I know the girl. Yeah. Since 20 years, you know. I never had problems with her. Never. She was always very nice to me. But Thomas told me, and Thomas is my dear friend. He tells me everything. Right. Always, always when he goes to the composing process, he tells me, Timo, I'm doing this. So like you know, I mean, my this guy has a Disney room in his home. A Disney room. Yeah. He designed a Disney. Full, room. full of Disney stuff. Yes. yes. Thomas from Nightwish yes. has all this. Yes. Oh my God. Yeah. He's a big. Uh, uh, I guess I. I, I we could can call him if you want. I could. We we, we should call we him. Call but him. I, but but I, w- I would figure out he's like um, he's like a Pirates of the Caribbean kind of guy. Yeah right? yeah yeah yeah. Right. Yeah. Oh And Marco God. Hietala, the bass player. Marco Hietala, he's amazing. We can call him too. He's an incre- he's an incredible singer. Marco is. You know, Marco was singing in a band called Tarot. Right. He was. He was. Yeah. And. My brother and me, we heard this, and I was in military service right. in the fucking forest in a tent, and I hear wings of darkness, of tarot. Right. It's like wings of dark. I'm like, this is from Finland. There's no fucking way. Did you ever listen to that um, Pink Floyd cover, um, High High Hopes, from Nightwish? Man, man, I met Waters. You met Waters yes, too in wow. Helsinki. Wow. I saw the wall. The whole show, you saw it. Yeah, in yeah. Hartwell Arena, thirty thousand people. They build the fucking wall, and in the end, it collapses. And this guy is so fucking political. He hates Israel, <laughs> with vengeance. He hates Israel. He hates Israel. Yeah. Right. So I meet the guy and I talk to him like, "Who are you?" I'm like, "I'm nobody." I'm, but I really like you. I like your message. I, I support you always, you know, because you are, you. What you done with the wall is actually the because I went to therapy for seven years right, in my right. life. Yeah, and I learned that we build walls around us to disconnect from the people, you know. But wh- why? Why should we do this? We are all brothers and sisters here. Right. You know. Yeah. We are brothers and sisters. We can talk, hug, share. You know. Uh, I tell you, man. Sister, I love you. I love you, man. I love you, woman. And th- there's nothing sexual in this. It's only love. So, solely for because we're human beings, man. Yes. We're we're brothers and sisters. Yes. Right. And this is fundamentally what what the planet Earth is about because we have collective consciousness. Right. Right. That w- we all contribute. Right. Know. And okay, I ro- I wrote a song called Great Divide. The Great Divide, yeah, of course, with, uh, with your Lande, yeah. And in this moment, this is the Great Divide. It's as old as a fuck. 
it's a battle between good and evil. Right. That's what it is. That's what's going on you right gotta, now. Yeah. You gotta you gotta take sides, man. You, you gotta, gotta take sides. You, yeah. gotta, you gotta know who you're gonna be with. Yes. So it's a great divide. We gotta it's division, man. That's right. It's division. Perfect. Timo, we're gonna jump we're gonna jump into quick questions and then we're gonna go straight into music, okay? okay. Here we go. So um, these answers are gonna be fast and quick. Well with me it's never quick. Ah, I know it's not. But here it goes. Okay, so um So Timo, um while you still strum, keep please keep on going. Timo, um so in, in all of your music, uh who would you like to collaborate with? Blackmore. Yeah? I never met this guy. I, I talked to Jens. I asked Jens because Jens plays in Rainbow, right? My keyboard player. Yeah. So I, I asked Jens, did you ever talk to Richie about me? Because, you know, I started with this. I was 12. Do you know Kill the King? Of course I know. Kill the King, yeah! Rainbow on Stage, Love it. Rainbow on Stage is the first album I bought. Really? I listened to it so much, I wore it out. I had to buy another copy. <laughs> I can play every rainbow, every blackboard. And I, I said to Jens, did you ever talk to Richie about me? And he said, yes, I have. And you know what Richie said? What did he say? I know Timo. I know him. I know his words. So Timo, in, in all of the career that you had, in all the incredible career that you had, in, in all of the... Um, feelings that you've given us because you're an artist and you've given us so many um, emotions I would like to ask you um, what's your biggest fear what's your biggest fear in life well in this I go to Bono my biggest idol I'm not afraid of anything in this world there's nothing you can throw at me that I haven't already heard I just try to find a decent melody the song that I can sing for my own company. I, I'm not scared of anything in this world, you know. If I die tonight, I know I did my peace. I go to, straight to heaven, straight. Because that's where I am from, you know. God put me to this earth for a purpose. He protects me all the time. He gives me all I need. Not always what I want, <laughs> right? but what I need. But like, so I guess through all of this, like, would your biggest fear would be to uh, not not be able to communicate that to the world? What, what, what would your biggest fear be? Like, if 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 you were in, a, in this situation where you're like, I I would never like to face that. I would never like to see that. What would that be? You've been through so much. Yeah. What what would be a situation that that you'd be like that would make me write the ultimate fucking song? All I ever wanted to be was here for the people, with my music, my emotions, my thoughts, you know. Because I don't want to dismiss Scotty Pelt, who is a good friend of mine, but he was never like me. He was always more reserved to the fans, you know. Right. And I, I said many bad things in press, and I apologized to him one year ago in Helsinki. I, I went to Timo, you know, I saw the guy after the concert in Helsinki. I hugged him. I said, Tim, I'm, I'm so sorry what I've said. You know what he said? He said, apologize, accept it. We hugged and we cried. And then we took the photo. It was a million likes. Million likes. You know. Of you guys together? Yeah. All of us. The whole band. The whole band. Yes. Everybody. Matthias, Rolf, Lauri, Jens, Timo, me, everybody. Are you guys coming back together? We will. You will? Yes. When? Three years. We, 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 need, you. we need you to be together. Three years. In three years? Yes. Stradivarius will be back together in three years, yes. Timo. Yes. We're going to do one album and a world tour with two lineups. We, we're going to play all the classics. Because you see, we did like three DVDs. We did Sao Paulo, Milan, and something else, and 
it never was there. Right. Always something happened. Right. So there still exists nothing with me with the classic lineup, you know. So they know, I, I've told them, and we have to do it for the fans. Of course, know. for the fans. Yeah. You know. So let me ask you something. And throughout all of these things that you've experienced, what is your happiest moment? What is your happiest moment in all of uh, Stradivarius, in all of your career, in everything that you've experienced? I can tell you that. My happiest moment was in 88, 22nd of October. My daughter was born, Nina. I held her, she was this small. And I wrote a song called Angel mm -hmm. in Revolution Renaissance. Kiske sang it. Kiske sang that That's one. That's for her. So I went, I was in the delivery, I, I saw everything and she was there. And this girl is, well, she has <laughs> my humor, my genes, <laughs> and she doesn't kiss ass. So she's like me and, and she's gonna come here, you know. And I said to her, that I'm gonna write album full of music for her because she's a singer. Oh. Yeah. Okay. Beautiful one. You know, she's a amazing singer. So I think she could be a world star. You know. This let's girl. bring her over and let's show her to the world. Yes. Let's do that. We will. Let's let's do that, Timo. That that would be your um, your happiest moment. I'm guessing that. Well, I had many, of course. I mean, of course, that would be your 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 biggest. Pri what is your biggest pride then? Is it your music? Is it Stradivarius? Is it what you have left on this my world? My biggest pride is that I was never unfaithful to my art. I was always there, super honest. You know, I wrote my songs, and I never wrote them to fans. I always wrote them to myself. Every fucking song. But they hear the songs, they come to me, they say all the things like your God, your master, whatever. That never meant nothing to me. Nothing. You know. It didn't get to your head. No. It shouldn't have. No, because I'm not that kind of a guy. You know, I always tell everybody, I'm just a guy who loves music. I'm just a guy who loves music. And, who's and who is really in touch with his heart and emotions. That you can know, really transmit him through well, music. Well, Russell Allen saw me for the first time in Helsinki. You know uh -huh. what he said? What's that? This guy has a big heart. He said that. Let's play some music. <laughs> 